Hello everybody! If you've been here for my home journey, I actually transformed this office space in July of 2023. So it is now September of 2024. And honestly, I don't think I sat in here more than five times over the past year, which is sad. This room has just kind of sat empty. I just have not used it and it really is such a stunning space. So I want to make it more of a usable area. This is also where like the large balcony is and I do love going out on the balcony, but I just kind of walk through this room and don't pay much attention to it. And that's not how I want it to be. So just doing a mini makeover in here, I'm actually not like purchasing really anything new. I'm gonna use a bunch of pieces I already have. I also am partnering up with Fiverr on this video, which is so fun because I had a couple of custom pieces created for this room. I'll share that with you shortly, but let's go ahead and get to removing some of this artwork. I also wanna take down the light just to make the painting easier. I am going to have to swap this light out. I'm gonna find a new space for this though because it's one of my favorite lights in the entire house. The other night I went ahead and swatched a few colors just to get an idea for the room and they are a satin finish like a lot of swatches come so they kind of have a sheen to them which I definitely want to do a matte finish in this space but from all of the swatches here I wanted to go with kind of like a classic country club green. There's this color in my backdrop called Porsche Green. I believe that's what it was called. I'll pop it up on the screen right here but I don't have the backdrop colors so I kind of wanted to find something similar and I think I'm going to settle on this one here. This is called Vogue Green by Sherwin-Williams, but I think it's gonna be really nice. It's not as saturated, so I think tonally it'll be really nice and bright, but it will still look a little muted and go with like some of these darker wood tones and kind of play with the living room really nicely as well. painting short and sweet for you guys because I know you watch me paint all the time and I'm a king of painting because I just love repainting a space. I don't love it but I do feel like if I'm redoing a room like I love painting it because it gives a fresh start and I always just love a fresh coat of paint. It always looks nice especially when you get to choose the color and customize it so I opted for this emerald green. We're darkening it up from the olive green that's currently on the walls which is such a stunning color and we had everyone on task here. Marie was doing windows, Justin was doing all the trim and I was rolling all the walls and doing the built-ins. Good morning, everyone. The paint is on the walls in here and look at that color. It's a little, the camera's a little bright right now. It's a hard color to pick up on camera because it's showing up a lot brighter. Uh, dark colors just tend to do that on video. This is way darker in person. I'll pop up some clips of how it actually looks kind of like true to eye, but I am loving it so far. I do think we need a few elements in here, like the dark floor, the floor color at the moment, like it does not go with the wall. So I'm actually gonna be covering up almost all the floor with a rug. I wanna go ahead, bring the rug in, get the couch, in here and then we're gonna work on a very exciting little custom kind of DIY element that we're gonna add to the space. I had to get a two three move today so I'm not allowed to lift heavy things and so Drew and Marie are coming in with the rug. This one's so heavy. It's gonna change the look of this room. All right we're gonna bring in the couch now. Thanks. Wait hold on. Hold on! <laughs> I believe in you guys. Okay what do we think you guys? I like it. Oh, it's so pretty. I love it. Yeah. Also, it's like exactly the palette of this art right here. <laughs> like, um, that is yeah. so coordinated. Basically, the idea for this room, after never utilizing it as an actual office space, was to turn it into like a bar and like have like a bar here with like bar stools in front of it and like a full bar back. But then I also realized like I don't even drink alcohol. It would be more so something that would be pretty, but another non-functional space. So I just decided that I wanted to bring some furniture in here, keep it as like a little sitting room. This room gets really beautiful light. We have the sunrise on this side and then we have the sunset on this side. So it's a 
nice, really nice room to be in. And I took the curtains off. I'm not gonna put them back up because I kind of want this almost to feel a little bit more like sunroomy, if that makes sense. I have a very, very exciting package here. Now, today's video is sponsored by Fiverr. And if you've never heard of Fiverr before, wait to have your guys' world blown because it is truly one of my absolute favorite websites. It's also an app you could download, but you can essentially hire freelancers from around the world to help you with anything you do not know how to do. From web development, social media marketing, AI, they have absolutely everything, you guys. And I have been using Fiverr for so many years. I've actually partnered with them a while back on a video and I implemented actually a bunch of what they suggested into my living room makeover. Ever since then, I've had thumbnails for my YouTube videos made on Fiverr. I've had email marketing blasts for my website made. So I always, always use Fiverr. Today I have something I have never done before. I actually had something 3D printed for the design of this room, or actually 3D rendered and then 3D printed. So this was actually shipped to me from someone on Fiverr, a freelancer. I went through the process of having a little kind of plaque with a fox head created because as you can see, I have this window above me right here. And this window here is the only window in the house that's kind of out of place per se. Like it's the only window that is just one off. It's up in the top left corner of this room. Every other window in the house has like a partner or there's one that kind of sits across from it or it almost feels like it's evened out. However, this window here, I always felt like I wanted to do something interesting when I was kind of going the realm of maybe doing some custom stained glass, but getting a quote for that, it actually was going to be over $2,000 for each little panel of stained glass in these windows. And I just didn't want to do that. I just felt like it was also going to take a bunch of the light away in here. So I actually reached out to an artist that does 3D printing work or like 3D rendering, and they created me exactly what I wanted to a T. I sent them a bunch of different reference photos and guidelines and we chatted back and forth and they sent me a few different options to actually look through and I was able to go back to them and just request a couple of edits. They actually had the fox mouth open to start and the ears were kind of pointy and I felt like overall it kind of seemed a little harsh and I wanted it to kind of feel a bit more cutesy and soft. I had them round out the ears and then close the fox mouth and once that was done my file was created and I was able to have it 3D printed but I do not have a 3D printer myself so I was able to search on five to find somebody that offers 3D printing services. And here they are. I'm so excited to open this up and see. Marie's sitting right over here because she's also excited to see. Oh, you're in here too, Justin? Oh, Justin's here too. Everyone's ready to see. <gasps> These look good. Wait, Justin, you can't even, you cannot even tell this was 3D printed. Oh, look at how good this looks. Oh, wow. What the heck? It has like a little tiny bit of a smile. I Well, yeah, I had him like, cause the mouth was open originally and I had him soften it. Look, you guys look how cute. It's on a plaque. Marie, come see. Marie, look at these. It's that, like, it's like, like molded or casted. Yeah, I've seen 3D print things that like are so kind of ridgy so or like, cute. but these ones look. are so smooth. Look at the 3D profile on this, you guys. Wow, oh my gosh, it looks so good. And so the idea is to have these in the centers of these windows, like kind of what Justin's doing. And then I'm gonna have a bar going across and sideways our plaque's gonna sit over the top and kind of sit in the window and we're gonna paint it green. I wanna have more of these made. You guys, would you buy one of these? Like what? I don't know that you do with it. This is so cute though. Huge props and thanks to D who printed this out and sent these over from Fiverr. These look so good. It's something amazing about Fiverr is they make it so easy to browse through the marketplace of freelancers. You can easily understand the experience Experience and quality of the freelancers by looking at some of their portfolio projects or reviews or past customer experiences with the freelancers. If you need help with anything, just search it on Fiverr and see if a freelancer can help you. And if you'd like to try out Fiverr for your first time or give it a go, you can get 10% off of your order by heading to fvrr.co slash lonefox. I'll put it on the screen right here for you guys. And you can use the code lonefox10 at checkout to get 10% off. So take advantage using the link in the description box below. I am an avid Fiverr user, so I think it's just an incredible platform. Form, and you can have such cool things like this made. First things first is I apologize about the quality of the video thus far. I was filming on a different camera. I just cannot get a hang of this new camera. And I was looking back at the old footage and I was like, oh, this is why I got a new camera because it's just not really that clear. It's something I want to figure out, but the room is looking stunning. Look at how beautiful the couch looks. I popped a little side table over there just to kind of get the vibes going. And I want to play around with art because I actually have a couple of large art pieces, all of which are currently unframed. I purchased these at flea markets to potentially either sell or use in projects and I just haven't got around to framing them. So there's four options actually that we can look at. I think I'm just gonna there's start- There's five options. There's five? 
One, oh, two, we had that. Three, four, five. Oh yeah, that one over there, I forgot. It's from 1984, and it has a beautiful texture on it. Also known as impasto. I'm just gonna put them back here, and then we can kind of rate them. Um, no. This one looks like when someone photoshops an art on the wall in like an Etsy listing. Like something yes. about it looks like Like super it's not imposed. supposed to be there, yeah. yeah. Then we have this option, which is a bright option. I like that one more than the other. For sure. And now this art I actually bought after I did my bedroom makeover, but I was thinking of putting it in my bedroom makeover. It's an incredible piece. Look at this, you guys. I just think this is so good. It's an oil painting, but it's like on this decomposing board that literally is actually decomposing. It has a constellation in it as well. I mean, yeah, that's the one like in my head is the one that works in this room. Like that is yeah. supposed to go in here, you know? I think we framed it dark too, like in like a dark walnut-y kind of color, like a little lighter. I think that'd be so pretty. I think this one's actually like a little bit more on the newer side. And you can use a little cleaning, but it's really, really nice. It's very different than the other ones, but it is pretty. It's really good. Like it totally like works in there for sure. Yeah. And I have this one, you guys, which is like an interior scene. This one's from like Belgium, I think. Because this one makes it nice and moody. Probably. Yeah, like dark academia kind of. Like honestly, that looks really good too. But I think it's because we're seeing a frame. Like I think all the other arts would look good, like even better than they did with a frame. Yeah, that's true. I love this. Look how old it is, guys, on the back. I just stole this from the shop's inventory. It's a really cool size. It's a really, it, that's like the coolest size of all of them, mm -hmm. for, sure. for sure. This piece of art is so good, it's massive. It's actually on the website right now. Um, and it has this like dark male figure in it. It's so good. I think in here it's just a little too dark. For the light fixture in here, now I would have left the other kind of cloche French light that I had in here because it's so stunning, but if there's no desk underneath, it is way too low. So I actually swapped it for this tassel one I used to have in my office space, but I swapped that one for this bamboo one. I just like how the light in this one illuminates more in the space. Look how cute these shades are I found online. Um, and they're just little clip-on shades, so you can clip them right on the bulb, and they have this like rope on the outside. They remind me of like a French just like handmade little shade. And I'm gonna pop these on the bulb and see how it looks. Something that I love doing that I've definitely shared on the channel before uh, when it comes to framing vintage art is framing them almost in a more contemporary feel or kind of like a mid-century feel and just using some wood boards from the hardware store. So I got these, they're premium oak and I cut them down to the length of my art and then I mitered the ends of them. And I actually want the frame itself to pop out. The width of the board is gonna depend on how much that's actually gonna be popping out from the wall. So I gave these a stain. I'm using the Minwax Honey Stain and I did two coats of this over all four sides of the frame. And this color was so stunning over the top of the wood. It just looked exactly how I wanted it to look. And I did two coats of this along all four sides. Since this piece of art was done on board, I was actually able to connect the frame straight to the board, but I also went through and made sure that all of the joints were really nicely fastened, so I just nailed into all the corners in both directions, and this is how the framed art ended up looking. I measured down eight inches from the top and then added these little D-ring hooks on either side, which allowed me to hang it on the wall, and I used my little tape hack, which is where you measure the distance between your two nail holes, and you just mark it on a piece of tape, and then you place it over the top of your laser level or just on the wall and you're able to screw directly in. You don't have to measure the distance. It makes it so easy. I did mess up once, so I had to remeasure, but you know what? That is totally fine. I've had a little bit of a slow start this morning. I don't know why it took me like three and a half hours to make this frame and get the art on the wall. It is currently Saturday at noon and all I have in here is a sofa, a light, and art. But honestly, I feel like this is a point where a lot kind of comes together quickly because I do have a bunch of items that I've sourced for my home downstairs. So I can kind of pull from that and we're gonna start bringing in some additional pieces in here. I love the way the art looks. I need to clean it just a little bit because I noticed it has like kind of a layer of dust on it. Um, I wanna add a side table over here, a lamp. I'm thinking like, I don't know, something taller over on this side. And then I think I might wanna do like a little bar setup in the built-ins over here, like, cause this was originally gonna be a bar, but I kind of wanna turn it into like a lounge, like mini bar, just cute sitting room.
I really wanted to make it a point to not purchase or buy anything new for this room and just utilize things I already had because I really do have a lot. If you guys recall this lamp here, I actually brought it as my carry-on in the plane when I came home from Round Top last year. I just could not not buy it. It was my one thing I brought home with me. And then I played around with a couple of chairs, which I'll give you a little insight on where these chairs are from right here. I have this concept of not using a coffee table in this room and layering a couple of stools. I might even add one more because I've had these stools. They're kind of like farm style stools. This one I got at Olive Atelier and I just love them. But the concept kind of is, is like anyone who's in here can pull it to wherever they want. So I'm not going to have like set or designated like side tables and like a coffee table, if that makes sense. I was thinking of putting just a couple of stools in the center because then they can be pushed out of the way or just kind of like maneuvered, but you can also kind of rile them up together if you want to make them appear a little bit more like a coffee table. So I thought that was kind of a cute idea, but I also needed to explain that so you guys didn't think I was just like putting some stools in the center of the room. I can see me and my friends in here, but also I could totally see myself using this as like an editing nook little room and like using this for my Uber Eats and using this for um, my laptop. And I need to show you guys these chairs because first one, you've probably seen this one, a lot of you. If you've seen my movie room makeover, this is like a rattan reeded chair. I got this from Badlands Vintage. One of my first vintage items a long, long time ago, and I've had this for years. It's been down in the movie room, but I actually recently put these new crate and barrel chairs I got in the movie room, and they just fit so nicely in there. And there's two of them, so it just allows for more seating in that space. And then this one I picked up this morning, and it is beyond stunning. It is just the most beautiful silhouette of a chair. It's an Alfred Christensen style chair. I actually won the frames at auction and they were damaged so badly. They were broken in multiple sections. When the frames arrived to my house from auction, it literally looked like a pile of like wood pieces. I had my incredible upholsters. They redid the entire frame, not redid it, but they put it back together, refinished it, it is so incredible and I had it done in this like buttery wool fabric. It was a faux wool. I was not going to pay for real wool upholstery. But I had two of them created and I think I'm going to actually use one in here and the other one I'm going to probably list on my website for sale. And I will say these are on the pricier side, but look how stunning. And it's just incredible how they upholstered them as well. But then it almost takes on this like oatmeal tone as well. It's so stunning and the finish is just I love it, it feels like suiting. The silhouette of the arm is just so beautiful. This is what the living room's looking like at the moment. Um, and yeah. <laughs> so here's how it's kind of looking in the room and it's a little backlit because of the window. Let me show you from this side. But here's the other corner and I really like it a lot. I think it looks so cute. And in reality, the chairs can even be pushed back in the corners more. I just kind of like them peeking out a bit for the video so you guys can kind of see all the shapes and silhouettes. This was at a flea market for $10 and I've had it in my storage room downstairs and I've always thought I can use it in like a courtyard makeover or something for like a plant. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm just trying to suck every last ounce of life out of this smoke bush that I can get. The great thing about smoke bushes too is like once it's here, it's just, it just stays like this. Like you don't have to do anything. And how the light just kind of illuminates. So this art piece here is actually an original art piece by Leanne Ford and this was folded up and given I believe to everybody for her Pottery Barn PR package and it was in the little picture that they sent over and I loved it. I had to keep it. I thought it'd be perfect for this bar area. I just placed it over the top of this black mat board that I had and just put it in a frame and added it to the wall. <laughs> final clips. Winston's also jumping around over there. So let me go ahead and reveal to you guys the Lone Fox Lounge. I think that's what we're going to call this. The Lone Fox Lounge in three, two, one.
this little makeover of what used to be my office, but is now kind of like the Lone Fox Lounge. If you have any ideas for what we should call this space, definitely leave a comment below if you feel like you know the vibes of it, because it doesn't have a name yet, and I love naming my different spaces. And I also hope that you guys love this makeover, because it has a lot to live up to, honestly. The office really was so stunning before, so I hope that you guys love this one as well. And also, I want to give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor, which was Fiverr. If you are looking for a freelancer for truly anything, absolutely anything, head over to Fiverr and use my code on your first order to get 10% off. It is just LoneFox10 at checkout, and you can use the link below. It is fvrr.co slash LoneFox to head over to Fiverr. And I would love to know from you what your favorite aspect of this room is. Is it the paint color? Is it the couch? Is it the little fox head crests that we added to the window? The wood ceiling that we installed previously? I would love to know in the comment section below, so definitely let me know. Last but not least, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe because we have a lot of content coming for the holidays coming up and I am so excited. I'm also excited to have my living room and the room right next to it very usable and ready for holiday decorating and you know that that is going to be happening shortly. So stay tuned and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye!